big sale, big savings at oldtimeradiodvd.com. All of our collections, the prices have been slashed. Pricing will be good until January the 1st, 2018, so don't wait. Buy today and enjoy for a lifetime at oldtimeradiodvd.com. You'll be glad you did. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early west, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Medicine Man. Mr. Cassidy was three days overdue. That fact alone would have been enough to make the four ranch owners nervous. But there were other reasons, too. Joe Randall, foreman of the double art, listened patiently while one of the other three men listed them. I don't know what you're going to say, Joe. You knew Cassidy years ago on the bar 20. You can vouch for him. Well, I don't know him, neither do I. I don't know. He got close to $20,000 of our money, and he's three days late. Now, wait a minute, Ed. Don't get all wild up over nothing. $20,000 ain't nothing. Yeah, I'm well, I'm not, not through. Oh. You all thought it was a good idea to let Hoppy and his boys drive your herds into the railhead along with mine. Yeah? Said it'd save you some money. And if he was going to do me the favor, he might as well drive your cows along with mine and collect for them. I ain't said nothing about Cassidy anyway. It's that other one. California? No, no. The kid, that Marty Brett. What's the matter with the kid? One of my boys blew in from town a while ago. He tells me Speed Blaine is with us again. With his gang? Yeah. You know what that means. What's that got to do with the kid? He was seen hanging around with Blaney two nights in a row at Ricky's saloon. Almost like they was cooking up something. Maybe something to do with that twenty thousand dollars that Hoppy's took room with him. You sure about this? Man who told me ain't given to exaggeration. So Cassidy's three days late with the money. So maybe Blaney put the fix on him through the kid. Only a fool would try to dry gulch hop along Cassidy. Blaney's done it to others. Don't matter none how fast a man is on the draw if you pot him in the back. Hmm. Okay, you win. They'll likely be putting up tonight at Boulder Inn. We can start tomorrow morning, meet them north of there on the trail, and collect our money. If, uh... If what? If they're still alive. back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Medicine Man. It's dark now as Hoppy California and young Marty Brett, the new Bar 20 puncher, ride up to Boulder Inn, the only spot of light in the long, barren valley. A small, solid top wagon is standing outside, the cab brightly lettered in red and green. Dark Richard. Herb sad sediment. Oh, by golly, Marty, maybe he'll have something from my rheumatism. <laughs> maybe you'd better leave your rheumatism alone, California. The last remedy you tried took all the varnish off the kitchen table. Oh, it weren't so bad. Seems to me the hide grew back on my hip in less than a week. Now, think Wait a minute. What's the matter, Hoppy? That groan over there at the hitch rack. Doesn't that belong to Speed Blaney? What if it does? We've been through that before, Marty. I don't like the way you hung around with him in town. I don't mind saying so. Why don't you leave that to me, Hoppy? Maybe I would if I knew what was going on between you two. That's just a little personal business. Marty, you're part of the bar 20 now. 
Whether you know it or not, we don't have personal or any other kind of business with men like Blaney. Come on, let's go inside. That's uh, two dollars for one night, gents. Thank you. We'll pull out first thing in the morning. Um, you got a safe here? No. Why? I just wondered. Come on, boys. Let's get up to bed. Oh, sounds good to me. Come on, Marty. Well, I'll be up in a few minutes. I think I'll sit down by the fire a while. All right. Well, we'll turn back to bed for you, dearie. <laughs> You're so sweet. Hey, Sonny. Yeah? Come on over and be sociable. I don't mind if I do. Here's a chair. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Hey, playing solitaire? Not exactly. Watch. Keep your eye on the cards I put down here. Okay. Ace of clubs, deuce, train. Put your hand on them. Not like this. That's it. Now take it off. What? The rest of her three aces of diamonds. <laughs> oh, don't ask me to play poker with you, mister. <laughs> you ought to see the tricks he has for the rich customers. Oh, uh, this is my niece, Janet. I'm Doc Richard. Oh, we saw your wagon outside. I'm Marty Brett, bar 20. Hello, do Marty. Do? Bar 20, eh? Yeah? You're pretty far from home. Oh, we ran a bunch of cattle in the market for some of the ranches north of here. On your way home now? After we turn over their money. I see. You must be uh, pretty tired. Yeah, I ran into a wind this morning. Still got a head full of trail dust. Headache? Ah, oh, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if I could get some hot water from the kitchen. Well, what for? I've got just the thing for a headache. Janet, dear? Yes? Why don't you see if you can rustle up some hot water and cups? I think we all might feel better after a good hot cup of tea. Pretty, <laughs> man. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Don't know who's ever seen such a pretty, pretty. California. California. <laughs> oh, pretty, pretty. California. Yeah. Oh, happy. What are you talking about? Oh, shucks. I just met a right pretty with, with a million dollars and a... And what? Doggone, you went and woke me up before I could marry him. Oh. Yeah. What, uh, what time is it? Eleven o'clock. Uh, where's Marty? Still downstairs. Hmm? Maybe you ought to go down and... No, uh... I've done enough talking. He's old enough to know when to come to bed. Okay. You look worried. I am. He's probably a Blaney again. Uh, well, I guess I've got to do it. Do what? Hoppy, uh, I've been an honorary critter all my life, uh, but I never talked to four. Uh, uh, that is when I promised to keep my mouth shut. What uh, are you talking well, about? Well, I promised Marty I wouldn't blab, but uh, I reckon if I don't, you'll keep getting worse and worse ideas, so... Go on. Hoppy, the kid owes Blaney $200 from a poker game over to McGowan Saloon at Rawhide. Before he come to the bar 20, he's been saving his wages to pay Blaney back, but... The gent's getting impatient and... That's why he's been... Yeah, yeah. Hoppy, you sure? <laughs> so that's how it is. I was afraid he'd get into some real trouble. <laughs> now, now, Hoppy, now, don't you... Don't, don't worry, worry, don't worry. Well, now, I guess I can get some sleep. Glad you like it, Marty. Here's another cup. Thanks. Doc Richard's special brew. Spreads glow and warm through the veins, the arteries, and all their extensions and ramifications. Right down to the tiniest capillary. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just what I needed. I feel better already. Headache gone. Headache? Oh, what's a headache? You know something, Doc? You're wasted in this poor godforsaken country. Take this remedy east and you'll make a fortune. The sky had rain gold pieces. What about it, Uncle? Maybe someday. I don't know, though. We've been doing all right, haven't we, Janet? Yes. Yeah. We've been doing all right. Well, 
But I keep telling you, Cassidy, I ain't seen anyone this morning yet. I ain't... Oh. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Uh, Speed Blaney and his boys. I uh, saw him leave early this morning from my window. He was paid up in advance, so uh, I just turned over and went back to sleep. Hmm. What about Monty Brett? Never heard of him. The kid who was with us last night. Oh, him, huh? Well, he might have been with Blaney, but I ain't sure. Morning, clerk. Oh, hello, Doc. Uh, stand for breakfast? Afraid not. Janet and I have some ground to cover today. Uh, uh, did you check the ground? Yeah, Marty's horse is gone. Oh, Marty? What, do you know him? Why, yes. He sat by the fire with us last night. Had a cup of tea. Then what? He went upstairs about midnight. To bed, I suppose. At least that's where he said he was going. Hoppy, you reckon he saw this? I mean, about... Uh, Never mind you know. that now. Uh, we won't stop for breakfast either, clerk. Well, you're missing some mighty fine vittles, gents. Well, let's see, Doc. You had to... Uh, Come on, California. Oh, now, I hate to make miss breakfast tonight. Yeah, I, I hate more to miss something else. What's that? The money for those cattle. Someone looked at my saddlebag last night. We're short $20,000. Before we continue with this exciting story, here is a word from your announcer. Back to Hop Along Cassidy and the Medicine Man. It's almost noon now, and in a small grove of cottonwoods ten miles north of Boulder Inn, Speed Blaney sits near a small fire watching a sooty coffee pot balanced on a rock over the coals. The man across from him, stretched out on the ground at the base of a tree, doesn't seem much interested in coffee. Funny thing, Blaney. Go on. I'd like to hear something funny. I mean, the kid running off this morning before we left. Well, what's funny about that? I ought to have my head examined for letting him walk out on me. It ain't only that. Shorty breezed in this morning before we took off. He says the ranchers who own the cattle Cassidy sold are on their way to meet him and collect. Yeah? You don't suppose they don't trust him, do you? I don't know. Hey... What are you getting at, Pete? Well, uh, suppose Cassidy was to show up without the money, with maybe some story about someone holding him up on the trail. You reckon they'd believe it? You mean uh, if we, uh... Yeah. Hey, maybe you ain't so dumb, Pete. Maybe you got a brain after all. So the kid disappears. Everyone back at the end knows that. And no matter what Cassidy said, they'd figure the kid run off with the money and Cassidy was trying to cover for him. Yeah. It's a gamble. It's also 20,000 bucks. Put the fire out. Let's lope over to the trail and check on Cassidy. You won't have to go that far, Blaney. Cassidy, put up your hand. Yeah? How did you like it? Oh. Give me your gun. Okay. Now, no, wait a minute, Cassidy. Pick it up, Blaney. 
But my hand... Use the other one. There's a doctor on the floor south of the inn. He'll fix you up. Here. Thanks. California? Here, Huffy. Get rid of these, will you? Sure will. All right, Blooney. Where's the kid? Oh, how would I know? He's gone, along with some money we were carrying. You mean he... He really has the money? Yeah. What do you know about it? Nothing. I didn't think Marty was that smart. You haven't seen him? No, don't you believe me? I wouldn't. If I hadn't heard what you and your pal here were talking about a minute ago. You can't find your hardware at the bottom of the stream in the gully there. Uh, it can convenience you that way, but... Uh, Come on, uh, California. Huh? They haven't seen Marty. Let's go check with Doc Richards. He can't be too far away from the end. So long, Blenny. Better luck next time. Oh, that sneaking skunk, I ought to... You ought to what? He like to shot my hand off. <laughs> so he ain't got the money. You think the kid took it? Well, I don't know. Don't make no difference now. The robbery's out. He heard us. Mm. But there's a way to fix him, though. What do you mean? Come on. We're going to head off them ranchers. After we're through talking to them, they'll be sure Cassidy stole it. Yeah. Only one thing. Who has the money? I don't know. But I got a hunch that Doc has a sideline. Something besides medicine. <laughs> Team the boy, best thing in the world for you. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, Doc. Oh, it's good, it's good tea. You want to stay with us, don't you, Martin? I want to stay with you. Now, Martin, you've done just as I told you, because I know best. You took the money from Mr. Cassidy's room because it doesn't belong to him, does it? It belongs to us. To you and Janet and me. It belongs to us. But Mr. Cassidy is going to try to take it away from us. Look at me, Martin. That's it. You see Mr. Cassidy as our enemy. He's going to try to kill us and take our money away. We mustn't let him do that. Here's the tea. All right. Step back now. He's ready. Here you are, Martin. Drink this. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's better, isn't it? It's better. Now, listen, Martin. We're going to stay at the shack here for a few days. There's only one way Mr. Cassidy can get to us. Between the pass and the rocks, down the trail. Do you understand? The pass and the rocks. You will wait there, Martin, with your rifle. And when he comes, you will kill him. Before he can kill us. You understand that, Martin? You will kill Mr. Cassidy and the man he rides with. I, uh, I will kill Mr. Cassidy. just told you I saw Cassidy. That's what you asked me, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, but that stuff about the money. Yeah, uh, what about the money? Well, I just said if he's got your money, he ain't aiming to give it up. We rode up to him this noon in a grove of cottonwoods. Real peaceable like. And he liked to shot our heads off. Look. Oh, and look at that. Oh, oh, wait a minute, boys. Let's not go jumping to any conclusions. All right, Joe. You know Cassidy. We don't. I tell you, he's as square as they come. Ever try him out on $20,000 before? <laughs> what makes you think he run off with it, Blaney? Well, all I know is that he's pumping lead at everything he sees. Why, well, he winged another one of my boys and rode off like the devil was after him. Well, that's enough for me, Joe. Well, okay, boys. Let's go. Hold it, California. What is it, Huffy? There's smoke coming from the shack up the draw. And look. Yeah. There's Doc Richard's wagon next to it. Let's go. Wait. Huh? 
I'm not sure enough about Doc to walk up to that cabin in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Blaney hasn't got the money. As far as we know, the Doc was the last one to see the kid. Let's move up through the pass in those rocks. Here we are, Hoppy. Huh? And don't reach for them guns. Got you covered. What is this, Joe? Better put up your hands, both of you. You take the toll. No, no, no. no, do as he says. Uh, All right, Joe. We got him up. What is it? I'm sorry, Hoppy. We've been hearing things that made us a little anxious about our money. Where is it, Cassidy? Maybe you better tell me what you've been hearing. The fellow down the trail says you've been shooting at everything you see. Blaney? That's right. Well, he's lying. You ought to know better than to believe anything a rat like Speed Blaney tells you. Okay, so he was lying. You can clear everything up by turning over the money so we can apologize and all go home. Suppose I told you I haven't got it. Why, right, I told you, I told you. Now, wait a minute, boys. It disappeared last night back at the hotel. I'm not sure, but I think a man named Doc Fritches had something to do with it. Hoppy, you ain't asking us to believe a pot of lard like the Doc would have nerve. I'm in. not asking you to believe anything. I think he's up in that shack there with his niece. I think they've got Marty Brett with him. Uh, it's a long guess, but I think... Get down! Get down! Hold your fire. Wait. Suffering oh, snakes. It's smart. Yeah, and he's just shooting at me. What do you make of that, Hoppy? I don't know, Joe. I used to think I was a pretty good judge of men. I guess I missed on Marty Brett. Uh, better fan out and surround him. No, no, wait a, wait a minute, Joe. Let me let me handle this myself. California. Yeah. We'll work up this draw on the left until uh, we get above him. Then we can come up from behind him. Is that all right with you, Joe? I wouldn't touch that fellow, Joe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, boys. I'm willing to stake everything I got on Hoppy, whether you are or not. If it don't pan out, you can come to me for the money. I'll make it good. No, you always let that down. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Hoppy. Looks like it's up to you. Easy now. He's right below us. Take a look. Yeah. Rifle all cocked and ready. Waiting for someone to show back there. I still can't believe it. There's something wrong. Something we don't know about. What do you mean, Hoppy? I guess I don't know what I mean. Look. Look, he just leaned the rifle against that rock. Hold it now. I can hit it. I'll knock it over the edge. Steady. We got it. Come on. Marty! Get away from me, Cassidy. Get away from me. Don't reach for that six-gun, Marty. Don't. I'll kill you, Cassidy. I will. No, you don't. Listen to me, kid. What's wrong? What's the matter with you? Throw on me. I hate you. I'll kill you. Shut up. He's sick or something. I know it. Marty, I hate to do this. Throw on me, lad. Come on, California. Give me a hand. You sure connected, Hoppy. I think I know now. Marty's been hypnotized. Doc Richards drugged him with that tea. Hit me, guys. What do you mean? It was his chin you hit, not his hip. I'll explain later, California. I know now it's it's the, it's the Doc's doing. He sent Marty down here to take pot shots at you and me when we came up through that gap down there. Well, I don't want to disappoint him. Why are you shooting me? I just want the Doc to be sure Marty did the job for him. You take care of the kid, California. I'll handle when I need you. Where are you going, Hoppy? I think I'll drop in on the Doc. After all, it's just about time for tea. I heard the shots. Was it? Yes, I guess it's over. The kid couldn't miss at that range. Oh. Well, where do we go from here? Anywhere we want, honey. You're pretty sure of yourself, Unc. Why shouldn't I be? Those ranchers will have a hundred-man posse out tomorrow morning looking for their $20,000. Know what they'll find? Poor little Marty Brett. Kind of bewildered as if he didn't know what happened. <laughs> and all he'll remember is that he took the money and buried it somewhere. You're sure that's all he'll remember? Honey, you just leave that to me. Oh, that kid's made to order. In the old days on Chautauqua, I would have given my eye teeth for a subject like him. Uh, water boiling? It's all ready. Good. When he comes back, I'll fix him another cup of tea, talk to him a little while, put him on his horse, and send him down toward the valley. Then we'll move on. Hmm, that must be him now. Oh, Martin, how did you... <gasps> Who are you? Hop along, Cassidy, miss. 
Sorry if I startled you. I just had some trouble down below here. I needed some help and saw this shack. What kind of trouble? Pretty sad thing. Young fellow who was riding with us disappeared last night. We trailed him up the draw here, and he was waiting for us down to the rock and tried to shoot us. Seemed like he was out of his head. You mean you? Yes. We had to kill him. Oh. Well, life is full of tragedy, my friend. I sympathize with you. Oh, the uh, tea is ready, Uncle. Maybe Mr. Cassidy Ah, will... yes, of course. How about a cup of tea, Mr. Cassidy? Might soothe your nerves. Nothing like tea. Thanks, I will. Good. Here you are. Take a good drink of that and... See here. Why are you pointing the... Well, yeah, putting my gun here on the table where it'll be handy, Doc. You see, I'm not going to drink that tea. You are. Me? Yeah. I want to see how it works on someone else for a change. The kid isn't dead, Doc. We snapped him out of it. Watch it, Doc. Get out of my way! Next time I won't miss. Stop it! Don't kill him! The money... Shut up, Janet! It. It's no use. Pull it out, the money. It... It's in the saddlebag in the corner. Back to Hop Along Cassidy. You know something, Barty? Well, not much. My brain still ain't what it used to be, and it never was a whole lot. <laughs> well, I'm glad Joe Randall and those ranchers took the dock and his lease off our hands. I'd hate to have to listen to him spout all the way back to the sheriff's office. Yeah, well, I reckon they have a good long spell to practice up on his hypnotism. Only I think he'll find the prison guard isn't a very willing subject. You know, I can't get over that guy. I haven't like gall to try to pass off a cup of that tea on me. Yeah. Yeah, good thing you dumped it out. Someone might have come dumped along. Dump it out? I didn't dump it out. Well, I looked just before we left the cabin. The cup was still on the table and it was empty. What? Well, someone must hold it. Huh? Look, right next to you. And do you, Duchess Geraldine Beard de Beard, promise to take this year, gent, California Carlson, a richer... For poorer, rheumatic and all, so long as ye both shall live. California. Wait, don't wake him, Marty. He's marrying that rich widow again. This time I want him to get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy and all the game. We'll be back soon, and of course we hope you'll be with us when Hoppy and California really ride through another thrilling and exciting adventure. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Medicine Man was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>